In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about sedentary lifestyles and the effect that that has on you and the people you know. A sedentary lifestyle is a lifestyle where there is very limited or no physical activity. Uh, more and more people now have sedentary lifestyles in this modern era, mainly as jobs have changed, more people sit at computers, use technology like I am now. Um, but if you talk to grandparents um, and possibly even your parents, Jobs used to be quite uh, physically demanding, manual labor jobs. So I know if I talk about my grandparents, they were in the war. Um, when they worked, they worked in factories and it was quite manual labor, manually intensive jobs. They were burning a lot of calories, they were on their feet, they were moving around a lot of the time. A lot of jobs now, due to advances in technology, do not require human beings to be as active. There are jobs that are still very active, so like builders, um, electricians, um, you can even argue that uh, police service personnel, um, they do very active jobs. But again, through technology and the changes of how those jobs um, are, are seen and how they are used, there is more sitting at desks and doing that sort of work. Um, and the lack of sitting is causing major problems too. There's a lot of research now that we do a lot of sitting. now. When my back is really bad from all my running, um, I will then go and see a, a chiropractor. And my chiropractor said to me to act like a caveman, who I know I look like one anyway, but they say to act like a caveman. And what they mean by that is basically stand or lie down, do not sit. Because the sitting position is not great for our bodies and especially our backs and our spines. So, um, and if you think about what you do as students, then a lot of your day is sat in school lessons um, doing your work. So sitting is not great. So more and more people are sitting. And there's a piece of research at the moment that says that British people sit on average for nearly nine hours a day. Well, when you think you sleep for maybe eight or 10 hours, um, then, then you know for the rest of that time, you know for a large proportion, you are sitting. As you can see, I'm standing. Most of you who I teach will know that I'm, I'm standing. When I stand in lessons, I rock around as well a little bit. Um, and I carry my little pedometer and I carry my, my steps on my watch. So I'm always doing that, but I'm not good at sitting still. Um, but it is something to be aware of that this is part of a sedentary lifestyle. One technology has changed our lives, so our jobs have changed and become, um, there isn't as much manual labor in those jobs. It's one of the reasons I want to become a PE teacher. I knew I didn't really want to sit behind a desk for long periods of time. I wanted to be active. I wanted to be moving around. I want to be outside. Um, even in the bad weather, I like going outside. My hobbies include that. Um, so that's also a problem that jobs have changed and become more sedentary. But also that the research is saying that British people are on average sitting for nine hours a day. Now that is going to have a massive effect on your health. Some of the examples of problems that you can get from a sedentary lifestyle include heart disease, so you're not using your heart as much. So then, you know, we all know that the heart is a muscle, and as any muscle, you have to use that muscle, you have to train that muscle, make it stronger. If, you know, just coin a rugby term, if you, if, you don't, uh, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. You know, you need to look after that heart, you need to make it work um, for it to become stronger and healthier. We can develop type two diabetes due to lack of movement uh, and our diet. Um, we can become obese and excessive weight gain. There's a, again, there's a lot of research at the moment around calorie intake, and they've compared our calorie intake at the moment to back in the 1950s, which is a long time ago even for me. Um, but actually, our calorie intake is only about 75 at modern day is only about 75 calories more than it was in 1950s. The difference is that we are not modern day. We are not as active, therefore we're not burning off as much. Yes, there's much more sugar around, you know, fizzy drinks, things like that, which are you know that's up to you but for me that's a big no-no um, but basically we're just not as active we're not fit not as physical our days aren't maybe as long um, in terms of our working lives we can develop something called osteoporosis which is you may have heard of it as weak or brittle bones um, again through exercise and physical activity your bones will become stronger um, therefore there's less chance of them being damaged there can be a relation to diet with that as well but just something to be aware of we can lose muscle tone and therefore that can have an effect on poor posture. If you are sitting a lot of the time or hunched over a desk or at a computer screen, you can develop, excuse me, back, back issues, okay? So it is important to stand. So I know my posture is not great um, and I have to consciously think, stand up, 
to stand up okay so that's something to think about as well posture and then that can have an effect on other parts of your body as well so i know with my poor posture sometimes has a effect on my pelvis that then affects my groin that then affects my knee uh, and that's what makes it difficult for me to run my distances we can it goes without saying if we've got a sedentary lifestyle where we're not physically active our level of fitness will drop we will not be physically active okay <coughs> excuse me so i see young people now who cannot come out and run a couple of hundred meters around the field at a sedentary uh, at a at a safe pace okay i'm not talking 100 meters at top whack i'll ask you to jog maybe for three four minutes and i see young people who aren't able to do that okay that worries me okay you need to be able to move at a decent level walking even a bit quicker than walking um at a decent level you need to be able to do that for a few minutes at least you should be able to exercise for that for 10 12 minutes easily especially as a youngster <coughs> excuse me but as you get older it's important too and also um that physical activity you probably know this already um has a massive impact on your mental health okay and it can stop and hinder and improve um your mental health okay and it will it, you know things like depression or mental mental illness it can help relieve the symptoms it's not going to cure it in some cases it won't but um, there are lots of people who need the serotonin, okay, which is the hormone released by the brain, the feel-good uh, hormone. That can be released by doing physical activity. It makes you feel better about yourself. Therefore, that relieves some of the symptoms of depression. That is something to be aware of because certainly in the modern-day culture that we live in now, especially if you work in a, in a very high-pressure job, you need to have that stress relief that physical activity can give to you as well. It doesn't have to be structured sport. It could be going for a long walk with the dog going for a long walk with your with your family um going for a bike ride with your friends that is all physical acti activity where serotonin the hormone in the brain will be released and it's that feel good factor i'm going to talk to you about the impact of a sedentary lifestyle on your weight now and again there's lots of pieces of information out there if you look on uh, news channels you'll see information out there all the time and there are um, three key areas to look at overweight over fat and obese okay um, and we'll talk about uh, anorexia and those conditions at a separate in a separate video but overweight means that you weigh more than your expected weight for your height and your gender or your sex okay so male or female you can be overweight um, while not being over fat and I'll talk to you over fat in a second being overweight is not in itself particularly harmful unless it is accompanied by being over fat okay um, some performers af different athletes okay will be overweight due to other factors for example their muscle uh, muscle girth or their muscle structure um, and we know that muscle weighs more than fat um, and bone density so if you do lots of physical activity um, that has impact on the skeleton let's say rugby your bones will be thicker therefore they'll be stronger therefore they'll be heavier okay so you can be overweight but not over fat so i'm going to talk about me a little bit for my height okay um i am probably overweight if i use a bmi um that scale and um, that you might have seen in some gcc lessons already i'm right on the edge of being uh, overweight almost classified um as obese okay for the activity i do okay for the, you know i know that i am physically fit okay my resting heart rate is 57 beats per minute i'm not built i'm the right i don't have the right body shape again i'll talk to you about it in a different video i don't have the right body shape for the activity i do that you know my trail running my marathons and ultra marathons but i enjoy it which is one of the reasons i do it um so that's that social element and um emotional element as well but i am i would be overweight for my height okay does that worry me not really okay would i like to be lighter probably because i know it'll help me with my running um but you've also got to be sensible about um what you eat and what you don't eat okay so that's something to be aware of now over fat is a different thing altogether over fat means you have more body fat than you should have okay so there'll be graphs and there'll be bits of information out there for ages and heights and weights and genders on how much body weight you should uh, sorry body fat you should have and bmi can play a body mass index um, can play a part in that as well if the level of fat in your body is excessive it can lead to certain health problems such as high blood pressure uh, high cholesterol levels too it is possible to be over fat but not overweight okay so 
you could have be a, uh, a a specific weight that you would like to be, but your the way your body is made up, you possibly could have more fat than you should have. That is more dangerous than being overweight. Okay, so if you're overweight, but but your um, your fat levels are quite are within boundaries, shall we say? Then that's okay. If you're over fat, so your weight is good, but your body fat is too high, that is dangerous. That is where you will cause health problems, and you can get your high cholesterols or your high blood pressure. It puts pressure on certain parts of the body, especially your heart. Now, obesity or being obese is a term you've probably heard a number of times. I'm going to try and add some information to to this term of obesity. But basically, being obese or, obe or obesity is a term used to describe people who are very over fat, so carrying large amounts of fat over and above the norm recommendations, okay? And it's not about being a little bit, okay? That would be over fat. We're talking about people who carry far too much body fat. Um, the body fat has increased to a level that is seriously unhealthy and putting major health uh, issues and problems onto your body. Um, it's not just about being a few pounds overweight, okay, as I've mentioned earlier. It is about having dangerously high levels of body fat in and on your body. Now, body fat could be in a number of places. It could be on the just underneath the skin, okay, um, and I'll discuss this in one of our lessons. Men tend to put the body fat on their bellies, okay, so the, the term the beer belly, um, but men trying to put it on their bellies and on their um, torso. Ladies tend to put fat on their thighs and their, their bottoms, okay? So that's where um, those two genders store a lot of their fat. So again, that's something to be aware of. But the high levels of body fat for obesity can have major problems and it can lead to um, mobility issues. So it's more difficult for you to move around. It puts a lot of strain on the body. You can get out of breath much, eas much more easily. You will have um, much less levels of flexibility. That's going to cause issues when you're trying to do normal daily tasks. So if you're trying to do your shoes up and you are obese, that is a really difficult task to do. It has major stresses on your bones and joints, okay, because your body's obviously carrying much more weight because of the body fat. Um, and that will put prop, you know, major issues on your back, hips, okay, your pelvis, knees, ankles, all of those joints are going to have much more force going through them. Um, that's going to make it much more difficult to move around, as I've already mentioned, but that puts major strain on those joints, which could then cause other issues um, like sprains or strains, stress fractures, and so forth. You can develop heart disease, which is very, very severe, um, a really dangerous disease. Um, yeah, yeah, there are treatments for it, but as I've said to my, in your, to my lesson, sorry, prevention is better than cure. Look after your bodies now, develop a good lifestyle, and you will not have to have those um, life-saving surgery and medicines and ch massive change in lifestyle if you get the right components in place now at your age. You can develop type 2 di diabetes um, as well. So that that is basically dietary diabetes. So that is you, you need to really monitor what you are putting into your bodies. And again, because of how you would feel you feel quite lethargic about being obese that can develop depression it's more than likely you're going to feel pretty rubbish about yourself you're going to develop low self-esteem that then has a knock-on effect okay so let's take for example um somebody develops becomes obese they probably don't want to then go exercise because they're worried about what people think of them or say to them or, or look at them. And i know people shouldn't do that but unfortunately some people might um that then develops well i won't exercise and then i feel bad about myself i might eat more therefore i'm not burning the calories and then put more weight on or become more um put more body fat on i get heavier so there's a very cycle a really dangerous cycle there that if people get into it's hard to break and that's why as sports scientists watching this video i think we have a duty to support people who do want to make a change in their lives so if you find somebody who does want to make a change in life whether they're obese or not and they want to be more active then i think us as sports scientists um, need to take their responsibility and try and help them rather than take the mickey out of them. And I know you wouldn't do that, okay? I know the vast majority of people are fantastic out there, but I think it is our responsibility to help people. They might not want to do structured sports of netball and rugby and tennis. They might just want to go for a walk. Fantastic. Let's help these people to become healthier and therefore live longer lives, but also happier lives as well and build self-esteem. 
So I'm just going to finish with this uh, piece of information I have for you here. And over fat means having more body fat than you should have, your normal boundaries. Overweight means weighing more than you should, depending on your height and your gender. Now, this could be due to being over fat, or it could be due, due to additional muscle mass, okay? So, because we know that muscle weighs more than fat. Therefore, being overweight does not necessarily relate to having too much fat, but being over fat does relate to having too much fat. I hope that uh, clears up that little bit of difference between over fat and overweight. Thank you for listening and join me with another video